All right. You want me to turn the music off? Please. All right, we're back here, Righteous Guitars, for another how to find a perfect guitar video. This is now a series, so I made a playlist. If you want to watch the rest of the videos we've made in this series, you can find the playlist here. But today, we're going to tackle acoustics. We're going to talk about how to find the perfect acoustic. And as you can see, we've got quite a bit to choose from today. Now, if you haven't seen one of these videos before, this is Righteous Guitars. This is my home shop here in Alpharetta, Georgia. We've got Ben Calhoun is going to be helping us out today. And the idea behind this video is to basically equip you with some ideas and some techniques of how to walk into just about any guitar shop anywhere in the world and walk out with the perfect acoustic guitar for you and your playing style and your budget. So we're not going to be recommending any specific brands or styles of guitar. We're really just going to kind of give you an overview of some ways to find the right thing for you. Without further ado. Well, hello there. Where should we start? What do we, uh, somebody walks into a store with a budget in mind. Well, that's the first thing, right? Get your budget down, you've got an idea um, what you can spend so you know what you can look at. But the first thing that usually comes up is the actual body size. So with an acoustic guitar, I think the easiest way to think of it is like a speaker. So usually with a larger speaker, you're gonna get more low end, right? But it's also gonna require a lot more power to push it, right? Whereas a smaller speaker will have more articulation, like a tweeter or something, you don't need as much power to do it. So the second thing to do is think about the wood types, and I break that into two sections. So you have your top wood, which is the, the cone, that's what really is gonna give the volume to the guitar and probably has the biggest impact on the sound of the guitar. So with tops, you're typically gonna have spruce uh, and cedar. Those are the two main things. You'll see redwood occasionally, and there's like a billion versions of spruce. Yeah. So, they all have different characteristics and it's all variable in how you play. And then the back wood is your EQ. That's how I look at it. The brighter color the wood is, usually the more top it has. So like maple is known right. for being super bright and snappy. Yeah. So think about EQ, like that would be like cranking your treble, yeah. mids are kind of in the middle, bass is cut, right? That, that would be maple. Uh, take mahogany or koa or many other woods that are kind of in that mid-range tannish color. Yeah. Tend to be more balanced, so more like your EQ flat. Yeah, that's a treble middle bass, pretty well balanced. That's a great guitar for someone who's playing instrumentally, because it's just it occupies a lot of space, right? You get your third guitar type with darker woods, which would be like your rosewoods, cobalt all those different rosewood family guitars. Most of the time, they're gonna have more pronounced bass, also more pronounced treble, but a dip in the range. Yeah. So if you take somebody like Noah. Um, singer, probably a better choice for him would be something with rosewood. Right. That scoop is going to let his voice occupy the middle. The guitar will have low end, it'll have top end, but his voice will sit right in the middle and the guitar is scooped out so it doesn't interfere with that. Right. That's a really great choice for that. If you use those things combined, right, and I go, okay, we're going to use a small body guitar with rosewood, right, and say a cedar top, for example, cedar's a softer wood, have a finger style guitar. Right. For sure. It's going to have a little scoop mid. It's got a nice top end, and it's small, so it's going to have a little articulation added to it, but it's got some low end from the rosewood, and then you have a great finger style guitar. Right. You know, this is all right. debatable. Yeah. <laughs> well, this, it's like a guitar for an eight-year-old. It's a Firefly. It's a, yeah, it's a monster. I think this might be one we should check out. This is weird. That's about as small as it gets. That is about as small as it gets. But it has a great sound. It's like it's been high-passed at 100. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of bottom end to it. Yeah. It would track really well, I'm yeah. sure. All right, so this is the heavy hitter? Yeah, this is your classic Martin. It's a D41. Uh, it's rosewood, sick of spruce. It's a, it's a big dreadnought. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a hard hitter. And it's loud. I mean, this is a really loud guitar. It's also a good measuring stick. It's something we've all heard it a billion times. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that'll be perfect for that. All right. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's Isn't that sweet? That's cool. Yeah, I designed that. Um, for the, it's the only one. I thought it would be cool, you know? And it turned out so good. But this is an OM, and it's fairly traditional. Um, Cocobolo. Wow. That's a beautiful piece of wood. And this is a Adirondack top as well. So, yeah, very cool guitar. 
Too bad you don't have frets up here, you can't play. Oh yeah, you can, you do slide thing. Should get me stretching. Yeah. Huge. Nice. This is a Loudon 050. It's custom, it's Lutz spruce and Honduran rosewood back and sides. An arm bevel and ebony. Yeah. It's nice. And uh, this is a, an anomaly. It's a huge guitar, but it's very sensitive. So you don't have to hit it hard, but when you do, it's a loud guitar. Yeah, I think that gives you four pretty unique, from tiny to enormous guitars to play. All right, so I'm gonna take you through the signal chain we're gonna be using today. Um, starting with the microphone. This is a mic I've had for five or six years now. It's a Blue Dragonfly Deluxe. These are really cool and really rare. They only ever made 175 of these back in like 2001. And this one popped up on Reverb five or six years ago and I jumped on it. If you ever see one of these, you should buy it. It's one of the best mics for any kind of acoustic instrument that I've ever heard works great on vocals. From there, I'm going into my Zoom H6 and using the preamps on board there. And I'm also using the mid side mic capsule to capture some of the room. So you're gonna be hearing mostly the blue and you're gonna be hearing a little bit of the room blended in with it just to kind of give you a sense of how the guitar is actually sounding in the space. And then the headphones I'm using today, these are from Meza Audio. They sent these out to me a few months ago and they're kind of really good do it all headphones. They're good for listening, like hi-fi audio stuff. They're good for mixing. And I've actually been using them primarily to travel with because they're really, really comfortable and you can wear them for a long time. So yeah, these are the 99 classics. They're great. There'll be a link below to basically everything that I'm using if you are interested in finding out more about it, except for the Dragonfly Deluxe because you can't buy that <laughs> anymore unless you find one. So uh, we're gonna start with this little guy, the Santa Cruz Firefly because it's the smallest and Ben and I feel like it's a really good way to show you the differences between body size of guitar. We're going to work our way from the smallest body all the way up to the biggest body being the Loudon behind me. So.
so the Firefly, mm -hmm. I immediately overpowered that guitar. Yeah. It's a like, very small guitar. On the first strum, it was like, it sounded like there was a compressor on it, and it didn't yeah. have any more to give. Well, it's a, it's a redwood top, which is a softer wood, kind of like cedar, but a little more headroom, but it's tiny. Yeah. So that's for a very light touch, someone with a super light touch. Which not, not me. No. And then the Lighthouse was mm -hmm. great, but I think I overpowered that one too. That's I'm, impressive. I'm, I'm a, How long did you play it? Five minutes. So they, there is a thing with some guitars, some woods in particular, and Adirondack specifically, that they don't immediately open right up. So you might have needed a little more time with that guitar. I've never heard that before. So I don't play acoustic very often, and I've been reminded in uh, making this video so far that I'm not, I'm a, I'm a utility acoustic player. Yeah. Like, I need an acoustic guitar to like play a part when I need to, or maybe mm -hmm. do a gig every now and then where it needs an sure. acoustic song. And so I feel like something like that OM didn't really suit me because it's just like, I, I need a strummer. And so right. the, the Martin felt most at home in that respect until I picked up that Loudon. And I was actually really surprised by that Loudon. Yeah, I'd forgotten how good that guitar sounds. It's, it's loud. It's got a lot of power and it's got a lot of headroom. I almost had to adjust my preamp on my mic to turn it down. Really? Because it was yeah. that it's much incredibly louder. Loud. But it doesn't take a huge amount of force to get it moving. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot of headroom. I mean, that's a great, great sounding guitar. So with that in mind, what would you, if you were going to pick out a guitar for me? Yeah. If I came in and was like, okay, I need an acoustic guitar, what would you put me in? Based on what you just said and knowing how you play electric, which is different. Uh, yeah. You just need something that sounds good plugged up. It's not like you're going to have incredible condensers out there and yeah. you're doing it really intimate so, shows. You're not yeah. rocking all the time. So, yeah. Or it's like a duo type of thing from, from what yeah. I understand. Yeah. So in your case, I think a more straight ahead dread would be probably a good choice. But I've got a couple of guitars I could recommend right out of the bat for you. Okay. This one's actually Whoa. got some wear on it too. Um, this is a, you know, if we forget, forgo the brand altogether, this is kind of like a pre-war Martin style guitar. Okay. It's mahogany back and sides. It's a, this one's actually a torrified top, Adirondack top. Yeah, so what is torrified? So torrification is the process in which they'll actually bake or cook the wood. You hear it called roasted, like roasted maple. And the idea behind that is you're crystallizing the saps and getting a lot of moisture out of it. Um, the end result being that it kind of prematurely ages the guitar. It's a way to get a guitar not be stiff out of the box. A really good example of this would be the Lighthouse. Mm -hmm. That guitar's stiff until it warms up and opens up. Once it opens up, it's a dream. Yeah. But you gotta play it for a while to get it to open up. With a Torrified guitar, a lot of times they're just right out of the gate. <laughs> That's a really what you would like a dreadnought to sound. The flip side of that uh, would be guys like Richard Hoover from Santa Cruz, who will not torrify woods. Uh, he believes that if you torrify it, you're actually preventing it from reaching its full potential of age. Like you're prematurely aging it, but you're not allowing it to really mature on its own. So you might not get the same result, say, seven, 10 years. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this would be one that I would pick for you. One, it's beat up already, so you don't have to worry about anything. But you like that. Yep. Uh, it is a dread, and it's a very traditional dreadnought. It's a good weight, too. It's lightweight, yeah. Yeah, see, now that sounds a lot closer to the acoustic sound I have in my head. Yeah.
this one? It just rings. Like, I wish you could feel the back and sides of this guitar. Just when you hit a... It's so resonant. This is probably the most resonant acoustic guitar I've ever played. And I've played old ones. I've played 40s and 50s Gibsons. I've played pre-war Martins. I've played some really, really good acoustic guitars. Uh, vintage acoustic guitars. And this is, I think, just as good as the stuff that I've played that's old. Huss and Dalton. I've never played one of these before, but... That does not suck. Which one do you like the best? The Huss and Dalton. Yeah, that's a really good one. I like that they scratched the finish off the top of it. <laughs> that's going to make so many people so mad in the comments. That's Relic! Oh god, I hate it! Relic! You did it again. Three for three. You make it kind of easy. <laughs> you have a, a particular style of flying, and it does cross over. I didn't know that it would, but it does kind of cross over into your acoustic flying. And you are utilitarian about it, so it's, you know, that makes it a little easier. So I know what you're doing with it. Again, kind of like with the electric stuff, so it makes it, you know, I don't know how many guitars are, not a lot. Something. Quite a couple. You know, for you, it was not too hard to narrow it down to three, and I knew which one it was. I mean, come on. But when we normally have somebody come in, you know, it, it's the same process. We actually ask a bunch of questions. And if you're, as one of your listeners, as you all go to a shop to find your acoustic guitar, you've got your budget in mind, think about those things like body size and those kind of the trick of looking at the color of wood just kind of help you. And you know what? That'll... That'll take you a long way to finding the right guitar for you. And then, you know, you can think about things like cutaway, if that's important to you, or a pickup, you know, if that's important to you, because that matters a lot. I mean, you'd have to have a pickup in yours, for example. You know, if you follow those kind of steps and then try a few guitars out, it does make it pretty, you know, not too bad to find the right guitar. So. Okay, so we're basically three for three with Ben picking out gear for me. There's something about that last guitar, man, that Hudson Dalton. It's, uh, it just fits my playing style. I'm a heavy hitter. I, I beat the crap out of the top of a guitar, and that one, it's like, it's a cannon. As always, thanks to Righteous Guitars for letting me come down here and film this video. Thank you to my wife, Tilly, for filming and helping me run this whole thing. If you're ever in the Alpharetta or Atlanta, Georgia area, come by Righteous and say hey to these guys. They've been really cool to me and the channel over the years. And uh, as you can see, this shop is worth stopping at and, and taking a look at. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name's Rhett, I post new videos every week. Be sure to subscribe down below and click that bell icon to be notified when I'm going live on the channel every Sunday night and posting new videos. You can also find links in the description box down below. If you wanna support the channel, sign up for the green room. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Rhett Scholl and follow Righteous Guitars at Righteous Guitars. So in the comments, let me know which of the acoustics we played today were your favorite and what do you want to see next in this video series? How to find the perfect X in this video series? Let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching. I'm Rhett Scholl, and uh, remember, there's no plan B.